In the Valley of the Dry Bones, God showed Ezekiel his power over life and death by breathing life into the long, desiccated skeletons that lay there in the valley. But for birds, breathing life into your bones has a different connotation. The horned screamer has an extremely unique skeletal structure, even for a bird. But to fly, you need to use every system you have available here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Tax- Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated, and thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today, we're talking about a bird that would make a terrible nickname. But more on that later. You just listened to me fret about these nicknames. No, 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 no. No, I'm not saying that the bird would have terrible nicknames. I'm saying if you were called its name, it would be a horrible nickname for you. Uh, sure, yeah. It's not like Wolverine. That's a cool nickname. <laughs> yeah, that would be. So what would be your nickname be if you were this animal? Uh, if someone named you after this be, animal. You'd be like, hey, look, here comes the Horned Screamer. <laughs> the Horned Screamer, yeah. <laughs> that would be the word. When I first saw this on the list that you had chosen... I was like, what? This could be anything. What is this animal? <laughs> a horned screamer? What is this, a Star Wars animal? What the heck is this? It, 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 it definitely sounds like a like a, a monkey from hell or something like that. Like a demon <laughs> monkey. Yeah. Like a, how, a howler monkey just with these goat horns. Uh, it also sounds like something you would name like a bomb. Like this is... This is Fat Boy... It, Yes, it does sound like a weapon. This is a horn, or like an ICBM named the Horn Screamer. Or like a firework. (laughs) I guess you could be a little bit more benign with it. (laughs) Call it a firework. (laughs) Um, Like we went straight to nuclear weapons. it's It's the name of the animals at the end of the first Uncharted game. There's the ape men that attack you. Oh, God. And every Uncharted like, game, it's like, everything is normal until definitely paranormal stuff is happening and nobody's going to talk <laughs> yeah. about it. But you just fought yeah. a bunch of horned screamers. Congratulations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. But it's, al- it's also called the horned banger, if that's if that makes things any better for you. Worse. By a lot. The, <laughs> does it? You really? Had, you, you, it sort of suggest, bo- it's suggestive either way. But definitely the second way. <laughs> Unless it's like a really, really good song. True. And then it's a and then it's a banger. That's like it a good. Slaps, me- it's like a metal right? song. Oh man, yeah. that's subjective too. It slaps us. It, it's <laughs> it can't get away from it. The innuendo. <laughs> the the the, the Gen Z language. So. Um. Uh, so, but would you like to hear what science calls it? No, no, or no. no you I, haven't I, done your nickname. Yeah. It's it's called it's called the uh, the horned screamer, but also known as the horned banger. Uh, in case you didn't hear me the first time, um, we're gonna call it here spooky heavy skeletons. <laughs> okay. And horn this way. Good. The first was one was horn good. Horn this way. Oh, okay, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I did it. Uh, yeah. Would you like to hear what science calls it? Sure. Well, it's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in the kingdom Animalia. It's in the phylum Chordata. It's in the class Aves. We've been here before. It's in the order Anseriformes. Anseriformes. Have we ever been here before? I don't think so. It's waterfowl. We've never done a waterfowl? We've done um, like a pelican, but I don't think it's in the same order. No, no, I think it's pelicaniformes. 
Uh, it's in the family. Inhimide. I wonder if that's the same as the Inhinga. No, South American birds. Only three South American birds. So probably not. It's in the genus Anhyma. Short for Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> She's and, not allowed to Hima. be syrup anymore. Yeah, they took that away from her, which is sad. It's in the species Anheima cornuta. Cornuta? Or yeah, that's cornuta. the binomial name, Anheina cornuta. Yes. And since we're in the business of naming things, and business is good, Mm-hmm. It's time for my uh, apparently new favorite part of the show, nitty gritty nomenclature, because we've done so many animals, and so many, from so many of the same category, that uh, I'm d- find myself doing nitty gritty nomenclature a lot more than critter groups. But I was super disappointed to find out that there wasn't one for screamers. What? There, you ha- you have you have a a group of birds. With a name descended from on high <laughs> that's just asking <laughs> for a ridiculous term of venery. Uh, and there isn't one. Maybe because there's only three of them. But, like, come on. There's birds. I, I was Is there excited a specific to- term of venery for waterfowl? N- no, because there's so many different kinds of waterfowl. I mean, you have, like, ducks and swans and herons and all this kind of stuff. And they all have their... Their unique terms of venery, which are great, but like this one in particular doesn't. This is the, the closest relative to the horn screamer is actually a, like a duck, like a magpie duck. But I didn't want to just do the term of venery for a duck. We might eventually cover a duck one day, uh, and so I didn't want to. I didn't want to rob future us of that. So we'll do the nitty gritty nomenclature. Nitty gritty nomenclature. Like I have a slightly more more real chance of actually using my brain to find find out but only slightly we'll see how this works out this time uh so we have the nomenclature and haima cornuta okay oh man i i almost want to like we could, what if we did a thing where it's like if you can guess the language or languages used in these words, I will eliminate one choice. Let's try that. Okay. You will never... But here's the thing. I happen to know that you will never guess one of these. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I mean, unless... you, I would just be just floored if you, if you did. But uh, because I've never heard of this before. This language? This the name of this language, yes. Oh wow. And I'm and I have a degree in linguistics. <laughs> yeah, no idea. Um, it was discovered by Linnaeus in 1766. So you'd think it would be Latin. You'd think he would go for the Latin, but I guess he didn't. Um so I guess we won't do this this time. Well, I mean, it's kind of tough because most of the time it's Greek and Latin, but sometimes it's not. Anyway, what does Anheima cornuta mean? Does it mean A, two-horned blackbird, B, swift-crowned bird, C, black crown, or D, horned screamer? <laughs> I guess since I don't know the language, I have no idea. Because I would think cornuta, like coronation, would be crown. I will give you a hint uh, that the la- the cornuta is Latin. You will you okay. So anhima is the weird language. Anhima is the weird. Yeah. Uh, what were the ones with crown in them? Uh, it was B swift crowned bird and C black crown. If it's black crown, that would be the weirdest because I don't think their crowns are black. 
Swift. Black Crown. Final answer. That is incorrect. The correct answer was two-horned blackbird. Cornuta means um, double-horned or two-pointed. And anheima is a tupian word. An, an obscure and extinct South Amer indigenous South American language. Uh, that means oh. blackbird. So maybe that was the indigenous name for it. Like what the locals called it. Well, it's also the name of the entire family of all three of them, or whatever. True. I think it's it's more all screamers are in this category. But different different cultures have different naming conventions. Cause, so there's only three birds, so maybe they all have the same name. Like that's the, the interesting part about like reading reading about the translations in the Old Testament for animals, and it seems to have a lot to do with like they would have one word for animals that are found in specific locations. So there's when you read the word hedgehog, it could be like, it could be a hedgehog or a ground pheasant or another kind of bird. So it's like, how could there be one word for, um, multiple, something that could be vastly a, different a, species. a hedgehog or a bird, but it's because they're, they're found in like, burrowing in specific areas and like there, there's a term for owls that's like that could be like other things eagle could be eagle or vulture and it's because they're both birds that nest and fly really high um so it's different cultures have different conventions for naming in there and hebrews hebrew culture seems to have like more been more interested in like where do you find the animal and animals that are found in those places are in a singular group all i know is that if it inhabits the ruins of a city that's under god's judgment it's a jackal it's 100 percent of the time it's a jackal or an owl because owls are also listed in like in places in with where there's ruins and i was thinking like, because maybe they nest the owls like barn owls like the nest in abandoned buildings so maybe that's why owls like abandoned structures yeah and anyway that's, that, that's how they got that role in the last of us because all the buildings are abandoned i i don't remember that um that's this the the one of the main characters is a barn owl oh that's right <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh. think of her as a barn owl. I do. Or the inside of, like, if when you crack a walnut in half, like that face that's in the walnut, that's that's what I see. But, <laughs> yep, it's two-horned blackbird is an Haima Cornuta. Would you like to know what it looks like? Yeah. Uh, the horned screamer is a general ground fowl shape with a chicken beak. And a stocky pheasant body. Almost mm, has some turkey me. qualities, too. I love me a good stocky um, pheasant body. <laughs> they have black feathers with white bespeckled necks and chests um, with white on their underside and legs. Uh, but they're mostly black. They look like a black and white bird. If it weren't for their orange eyes, you'd think that they were completely desaturated. Um as for as their name suggests, they have a horn, sort of. Um, many birds have feather crests on the tops of their heads, but this horn isn't made of feathers. It's actually attached to their skulls. Um, it's a protrusion from their skull. So it's like jo Johanna's been singing this song. Bones are don't don't forget that bones are outside teeth. I think it's from Kimmy Schmidt. What? Uh, there's a song, I think, from the show Kimmy Schmidt. It's like, don't forget that your bones are outside teeth. But my bones are inside. But they're like protruding from your flesh. You mean teeth are outside bones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said it backwards. <laughs> teeth are outside bones. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another way to look at it. Your your femur is an ounce, an inside tooth. Um, sure. <laughs> your teeth are outside bones. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll give you that. <laughs> I didn't Just remember that ev- everyone anyway. has a, a, a secret skeleton inside them. Uh, let's talk about their size and dimensions in relatable terms. So, oh, wait, you didn't, welcome. To, you, didn't, you didn't mention that the uh, the the horn is not like a doesn't look nice like a narwhal's horn. It doesn't look straight and well put together. It looks like a a scr- scraggly hair that like calcified or so or ossified or something and it, like that. And it's a little flexible too. So it like when they're like. They do these mating rituals that they're like squawking at each other, and they're just like bouncing around it, and it's disgusting. Yeah, it, it, it's this is this is weird. It looks bad. It's bad. It's a bad bird. Um, <laughs> it's a bad bird. But it, so it does, it's not it's not good for it's cartilaginous. It's not good for hunting. Um, they I couldn't find any information on like sexual selection based on it. Um, so I. I I could not figure out why why they have this horrible looking twig sticking out of their head that grows to be like just to six make getting long. around in bushes worse I guess I know can you imagine if you had a something the uh, the size you know for six inches for this bird is probably like a three foot tw- stick like growing out of the top of your head like you have cordyceps or something and it's like a dried desiccated stick that if you hit it too hard on something it would just crack it was like well this is and i'm seeing <laughs> it's poor seeing choice a few of pictures life. and it doesn't it doesn't even look like it's like always symmetrically located sometimes it's like a little bit off to one side on your head Ugh. It's like the Bobby Rusa, like the where they're. If you go back and listen to that episode, so that that their their tusks grow circularly out of their mouth and into their heads. They'll slowly bore into their own brains unless they are able to uh, uh, to trim them down. It's like why? Why is this? <laughs> uh, sin. How is <laughs> sin is in the uh, world and has marred the Babi Rusa? Checkmate atheists. How does how how is <laughs> how has the Babi Rusa not been naturally selected out of this planet of millions of years ago? <laughs> yeah, the only explanation for like this nasty little twig sticking out of the head, or uh, <laughs> or the Babi Rusa's foul horns. Uh, is that sin has entered the world and made creation less than perfect. <laughs> there were no Bobby <laughs> Russas or horn screamers. And then the instant that that angel was set <laughs> up the Garden of Eden, unleashed these horrible monstrosities, these <laughs> omens that needed to be locked at the bottom of the Erd tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, welcome to the Love Measure Up segment, segment the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. Uh, it's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in uh, yourself saying, singing, or screaming the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro. This week, I would love to hear some good screams in our, in our inbox next week. Um, okay. But... In that, in that, um, in that case, we are going to hear from from an animal with a name like Horned Screamer. We've got to have it introduce the segment. Uh, without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. A hundred percent, not the sound I was thinking would happen. Nope, I was. Def- I was thinking a scream. Yeah, like the not uh, like a echoey uh, warbling, the belfry bird or whatever with that like long, peeling scream mm-hmm. that it does. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like an alien, a mechanical alien, or like what? 
like that weird sound that the Jurassic Park makes the 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 raptors make. That weird mm-hmm. like <laughs> sound. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's like this this sounds well like something done. like you would hear if you were walking around Jurassic Park. Yes. Um more on like that later, but let's get into length. They're 84 to 95 centimeters or 33 to 37.5 inches. This is a big uh, bird. Long. How many horned screamers go into the length of the, of a set of the largest Asian water buffalo horns point to point? So you're not just going Ooh. for the length of a single horn. You're going for, like, the point-to-point length. Uh, Are these ones that curve hint. up? No, they're, like, almost, like, horizontal. Like a cape buffalo? Uh, yeah. Oh, those curve up a little bit. Here's a hint. The largest Asian water buffalo horn-wise was measured in 1955. Asian water buffalo are native to India, Nepal, Bhutan, and Thailand. Um, as an aside, uh, every children's program that shows a bison calls it a buffalo. So they're all wrong. And I've, mm-hmm. and I think it all has to do with this, the home on the range. That, yeah. that song is, uh, is solely to blame for the fact that everyone thinks that a bison's a buffalo because that song gets so much wrong with the where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. Guess what? There's no buffalo or antelope in North America outside of zoos. Just change so. it to where our bison friends roam. Yeah, where our bison friends roam. Where the deer and the other deer play. Because there's no antelope. What are you doing? <laughs> what country were you perusing as you made no, wrote this what's song? What's that? What is that? Um... Oh, there's a... I know what they're... Ch- what's the... Uh... Caribou. That's a perfect one to put in there instead of antelope. The deer and the What's caribou what we did play. this the pronghorn. Yeah. The, where the deer and the pronghorn play. That's North American? Yeah. Remember we did we talked about how they are faster than any predator they come across because they used to be uh, hunted by faster things. But like we definitively said they weren't antelopes, right? Right, I think I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, we would have cut, <laughs> would have reneged that statement. Um, okay, water buffalo horns. Point to point, the wingspan you could even say of these the horns. longest too. Um, I'm gonna say, gosh, so two of two of these. Two two of these screamers lengths would be about six feet. That's a that's a that's a lot. It's a big bird, thirty seven inches. Yeah, it's it's a yard long. A um, yard bird. I'm gonna say three. I think that that I'm thinking about it. I feel like the average water buffalo probably has a six foot horn span, but the largest I think is probably nine feet. So three. Screamers go into the length, tip to tip, of the largest set of Asian water buffalo horns. The correct answer is 4.4 4 4 screamers. It's like 14 feet. It's a 13 foot, 10 inch horn yeah. span. Goodness four, gracious. 4.2 meters. That's a that's got to be a big buffalo. Ah oh, man, fourteen feet across. And look at the look it up. It's like it's almost straight out. Asian water buffalo. Hey, I'm gonna look this up. Oh no! It it no oh, wait. Whoa. That's a domestic water buffalo. No, this is like what I'm looking at is this giant like half moon crescent thing the dreamworks kid would fish off this thing oh yeah 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 what the heck what i saw maybe i oh i'm seeing some that are like straight more straight there are some pictures where the buffalo is looking 
up and straight at the camera and then they look straight. Oh yeah. But when it looks down, its horns are actually like a like a huge like you just took a big you you ate all your toast but you didn't didn't want the the crust. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. There are some that are like crazy big. Oh, here's what I saw. There's one that's like the horns are so big that they're like drooped down. Gravity has gotten the best of them. Wouldn't want to be that anyway. water buffalo. Yeah. Uh, big boys. Anyway, let's talk weight. Speaking of big, uh, the 3.5 kilograms or 7.7 pounds. Seven pound bird. It's good eating. How many screamers go into the weight of the largest scoop of ice cream? Here's a hint. The ice cream so was scooped in Cedarburg, Wisconsin in 2014. It was strawberry flavored and actually had the Kemp's Cottage Cheese Company brand carved into it. Carved it wasn't into just the a scoop. ice cream. Yeah, it wasn't just a scoop. It was a scoop with almost like ice carving art in it. Interesting. Whenever I see that, like a, a a selling point of someone's ice cream is that it's hand scooped, like I couldn't, I could not care less. <laughs> Who cares what scooped it? <laughs> It's just like, please, our marketing team needs something to write on this flyer. Oh, it's hand-scooped ice cream. <laughs> okay, I guess that means that I might get a smaller or larger scoop than if a machine did it. There's another, uh, there's another TikTok guy that like rebrands um, like junk foods to seem like health foods, and he just talks about how many like how many terms you might see on packaging actually mean nothing um, and have no legal bear like bearing to them. It's crazy. So you can just put them on like create. No, nah, no, it's like um, it's kind of like organic, but not organic. I think organic actually has something behind it, but like uh, all natural. That's what natural natural has no like what's natural. What's not natural. Technically, Rice, or, or technically pasta is not natural. It's like, what do you mean? What's natural mean? All natural ingredients. We did not yeah, go to so, space for any of these ingredients. <laughs> yeah. I guess synthesize them in a lab. But you had to use natural s ingredients in order to get the ingredients to synthesize in the first place. So um, I'm going to say 13. I think this is a 100-pound scoop. Because on one side... You have like, oh, what's the biggest I could get with like a big shovel? And on the other side, it's like, did I get an excavator for this? So I'm going to go with big, very large shovel. Uh, rather, because once I go excavator, it's like, fine. <laughs> like, this is a this is a thousand pound scoop of ice cream that this, <laughs> this massive machine pulled out. So I'm going to go 13. 13 screamers? 13 screamers. The correct answer is that 391 screamers scream for ice cream. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. The, the largest scoop was 3,010 pounds or 1,365 that... kilograms. See, that does that to me does not count as a scoop. A scoop is something that a person <laughs> yeah. could scoop. Yeah, There's no limit that's to true. this. This... this uh, uh, the, the limit is machinery. True. Yeah, I feel like you. If it, it's not hand scooped though. You said you didn't care if it was I, hand scooped. I. I <laughs> oh man, my words have been absolutely just thrown back in my face <laughs> immediately. I didn't have. I didn't have a chance. You're right. I do care if it's hand scooped. But I'm not yeah, an ice cream store. I did say if I'm at an ice ice cream store and it's it says it's hand scooped, I don't care. Um, actually, I'm I, maybe I'm less big scoop. Maybe I'm less excited that it's hand scooped because then like 
your hands were close to my ice cream. I want a robot scooped yeah. ice cream because they I'll... can really pack in the, sc- the, the scream. <laughs> that scream, the good, delicious scream. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trendy term. Um, well, that's all I got for that. Would you like to hear some fast facts before we get into the major fact? Sure, 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 sure. The horned screamer can be found in Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, French Guyana, Suriname, and regular Guyana. That's I didn't realize that they were spelled the French Guy Guyana. There's like with an Guyana I. and Guyana. Or is it Oh man, we're It's like G U G U Y A N A or French G U I A N A. Well, I and Y. Um, Guyana. But Guyana and yeah. Guyana. But but they prefer marshes with abundant vegetation and water plants. Screamers are so named because they make a loud call, like we heard earlier. In Ecuador, it's called El Clon Clon. El Clon Clon, probably. C-L-O-N. See, that sounds a lot more descriptive of the sound it makes than screamer. Yeah. Uh, and it's so named because it is uh, because it of the repetitive sound, which sounds like an echo. It, it sounds like it's uh, echoing with itself. I wonder if "clon" means echo. Clon. Uh, it's that clone. was my best William Shatner impression. Clon is clone. clone so clone, I clone. wonder if it's the same. Because a clone, what is a what is an echo if not a clone of the sound you made? That makes sense. I'm surprised yeah. that clones aren't called echoes. That would be that would be like so, a sci-fi movie. It's like they're not clones; they're echoes. That's what we're calling them. That's uh, that's like uh, it's like when like every new zombie fiction has to call the zombie something mm-hmm. different. So any t- if yes. you're gonna use clones in your sci-fi, you gotta f- find some sort of different. Uh, noun for them because clones are too mainstream Uh, they nest in shallow water and they anchor floating vegetation to the shallows to create a waterbed and they lay around three they lay around and when they lay around they lay around three eggs at a time (laughs) Um, (laughs) and they They really do they lay around they are no they lay around in that in the fact that they aren't extremely active. They live life surrounded by their primary food source, which are water plants. So they don't have to do a lot of work. I also live my life surrounded by my primary food source. Captain Crunch. Wall. <laughs> Wall. <laughs> Captain Crunch and Werther's Originals. That's really all that I eat. And you, <laughs> that's the worst. That, uh, that... That, that's a lot of sugar. Yeah, and, but and it would be, my 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 outside bones, otherwise known as my teeth, are falling out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would choose Werther's original to be the unhealthy thing that I eat all the time. Although they are delicious, I would go I just Reese's to, or something. I just happen to have some sugar-free Werther's originals here, so it's just what I <laughs> was, what came to mind. Okay, I don't know how you make sugar-free Werther's original. Isn't caramel just sugar? I I didn't make it. I just looked at the back and said, "Oh, it's ten <laughs> calories per, per the, del- delicious I've, succulent treat." And so I'm gonna. I'm. This is what's gonna slate my hunger. A succulent yeah. Chinese meal. What? There's a video that. Yeah, there's a video of a guy being arrested, and he's saying, "What's the charge?" Eating a meal, a succulent Chinese meal, and it's it's good. What it's is he, P.T. Barnum? <laughs> he sounds like he's very theatrical. Uh, anyway, that's all I got for that. Do you have any big facts? I sure do. Here at the 34-minute mark of the episode. Um, <laughs> the, the major facts is called Dem Bones. So I originally picked this because A, it's called the Horn Screamer, and B, it's got a nasty twig sticking out of its forehead. And it turns out that uh, neither of those things are really major fact material. But there is something that is major fact material, but it kind of leads into a discussion of birds 
as a whole. So uh, most people are aware, I'm sure you're aware, Joe, and I'm sure you're aware, listener, that birds have hollow bones. We've said it many times on Mm -hmm. this show. Do you know why? So they can fly? Yeah, but wait. The bones are lightweight. Yes. So that's that is yeah. the uh, that is what everyone has been raised to believe, and it's all thanks to a very obscure scientist from the 17th century named Galileo. Uh, he described bird bones as hollow and lightweight. So everyone's just followed after uh, after this nobody. <laughs> um, they think that. <laughs> They think they, they have hollow and brittle bones. Um, but it turns in. <laughs> there's a bat researcher named Elizabeth Dumont from the University of Massachusetts Amherst that is uh, looking to overturn this because it uh, turns out that's not necess- That's not the case. Uh, birds do not have um, like h- open tubes <laughs> for bones that that break super easily and are lightweight and and brittle. I thought they were like pumice stones like they have they're not hollow tubes but they're um they're porous. Yes, we'll get to that. Um so it turns out that uh bird bones are actually heavier than those of other animals. Based pound on pound? based on density. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it would have so, to be because you can't be pound for pound lighter or heavier. You would be right. the same yeah. pound for pound. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you believe in the theory of relativity and then you can just throw in some sort of variable and then suddenly something can... Never mind. Um, the <laughs> So the skeleton of a two-ounce bird weighs as much as the skeleton of a two-ounce mouse. So the... Uh, That's true. The, the, the bones are... A two ounce elephant also weighs the same as a two ounce mouse. No, the the skeleton of a two ounce bird, the bird itself <laughs> okay. is two ounces, yeah. and its skeleton weighs the same as a mouse that is its entirety is two ounces. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. This is not A equals A, um, <laughs> but uh, this is A X equals B X. So the and it turns out that the the bird bones are actually denser than most other animal bones on average and density is the how much mass per volume per unit of volume so bird bones are actually thinner they are thinner they're sl- more slender uh they are joined in places um and there are fewer bones overall um but despite thinner and fewer bones they it's their skeleton is the same would be the same weight of an animal that was their uh that was that was their same size and that's because they are densely packed uh and those bones are actually strong as strong or if not stronger than like say a mammal's bones um and that's because as you said the burn these bones aren't actually hollow it's not a straw or a tube that we're dealing with in fact i would you you could say a um, human bones would be more like a straw or a tube because it's just it's there's marrow in there um but mm-hmm. the bird bones are uh honeycombed or latticed inside and they have these large air pockets with these walls surrounding them and um these are called, these bones are called pneumat, pneumatized. I can't want to say pneumatized, but it's pneumatized with a P in front of it because it comes from the, the word pneumatic, which has to do with air and air pressure. So according to the Montana Natural History Center, the air sacs in their bones might even help with oxygen intake and allow air to flow through the body more easily making one bird breath go further and doing more and do more work than a mammal breath thanks to their bones that's according to this hmm. royal society for the protection of birds um so the respiratory system even extends to their bones by adding more oxygen to their bloodstream um and this gives them more energy for flight because 
flying is f flying using your appendages and flapping them is is a lot of work. It's really hard to do like unless you are designed for it. Um, what? I said it's like air sprinting. Constantly, yeah. Um, so it does... It, having bird bones be quote-unquote hollow, basically meaning it's not... Like a human bone has... There's the bone part, like at the ends, that's solid. And then there is a tube that runs through it and that's filled with marrow. So it's... It's... Uh, it's it doesn't have these air sacs in it um but so which is part of the reason why we can't fly among other reasons um but the so these bones do help them fly but it's not because they're lighter uh it's because they're like it's like having secondary lungs and in their bones um and not all their bones are hollow. So like large soaring birds, like a vulture or an eagle or an albatross, they have more hollow bones uh, than a bird like a cormorant or an aninga that dives. So usually the largest bones, like uh, the femur or the spinal column uh, or the ribs or something like that, those would be the ones that would be that would go hollow first in the kingdom of Lordran. Um, and the smaller outer bones, like the uh, the finger bones along the wings, and the feet, and all that stuff, those would not be hollow. Um, and so basically, you can they see a correlation. Um, a, a a diving bird, or a bird that spends its time underwater, um, maybe has a f a few of those large core bones as hollow ones, and then the rest outer all the outer ones being solid and then something like a, a seagull or an albatross would have um a lot of their bones be hollow penguins loons and puffins have no hollow bones uh because hmm. they're diving birds not having a bunch of air trapped in your bones makes it easier to dive underwater go figure um and emus and ostriches have hollow femurs which obviously doesn't help them fly, <laughs> but it uh, they they theorize that run. it may help them regulate heat. Oh, I was gonna say it helps like oxygenate their legs, like what you were saying, like blood and oxygen flows through their legs, which is running, which helps them run. Yeah, and they live in some of the hottest places on Earth, so um, in the the outback. Man, that was that was bad. I listen to a lot of Australian <laughs> YouTubers. I should be better at this, um, but the, the Outback and the and the, the Serengeti, um, horned screamers, bringing this to the animal topic at hand. Uh, they actually they they lack uh, special rib prongs that almost every other bird in the world has, and they have the most pneumatic skeleton of any animal. So, almost all of their bones are hollow and filled with air pockets. Even the outer ones, hmm. the, 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 the ones in the fringe. Even their skin is filled with tiny air sacs. And so, I couldn't find a video on this, but I didn't look super hard. But all, I did read this in several different locations, is that they make a distinct crackling sound when they move. Like they're just a like, like they're just bu bubble wrap, huh? Just popping, popping like around. Like you're correct, because I guess that's the same when we crack our knuckles and stuff. That's air pockets. Yeah. So it's the same thing. But it's in their skin. That's interesting. All of their bones. So there's a lot of. I wonder if that's satisfying, or if it's really annoying. You're trying to get to sleep, tossing and turning, cracking and crackling. Yeah, everybody knows exactly where you are. You're just like. He's just ASMRing right. all over the place. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and on top of that, they have a little cartilaginous twig sticking out of their foreheads. It's just weird what bones a for this for this for this bird. Almost for as weird as the Hudson. Giant bird. Yeah, the Hudson that 
has a cow's digestion system. <laughs> and like fingers <laughs> when they're young that they lose as they grow. Yeah. And, yeah. And their abil- along with their ability to play the guitar with their fingers. Mm. But yeah, that's the that's all I, that's all I got. That's the horn screamer. It is uh its bones and its skin are full of air. But it's also like uh, I we've never really mentioned the whole birds have hollow bones thing. And now you know. Very interesting. We've learned not just about the horn screamer, but about birds in general. Mm -hmm. So you got anything else? That's all I got. All right. The horn screamer. For you out there in Podcastia, scream your heart out. Keep your cartilaginous proboscis thingies to yourself. And always remember to breathe through your bones. Like most birds, apparently. But mostly the horn screamer, in particular, here in life, death. And taxonomy. Hey, Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. Life, Death, and Taxonomy is my favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> Horn Screamer. I'm Horn Gree.